it's another day that we finna be getting in these precepts. And we are going to finish where we left off at. We were talking about how Jesus came to a tree expecting fruit to be on it. And he cursed it and said no more fruit is going to grow on you forever. And we established the fact that that tree, that fig tree was none other than the nation of Israel. So now we want to keep going. We want to talk about fruit. I want you, one of y'all, to go to 2nd Esdras. 134. This is going to prove that both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom was not going to be fruitful. They had a chance to be fruitful and failed. Let's get that. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 1, verse 34. And your children shall not be fruitful, for they have despised my commandment and done the thing that is evil before me. Was the southern kingdom given the commandments? Yes. yes. Was the northern kingdom given the commandments? Yes. They all was given the commandments. And God, the almighty Lord, the one whom we call Lord in this house, said that Israel was not going to be fruitful. Now, I want you to go to Isaiah 32, 12, and 13. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 12. They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Keep going. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city. All right, so Israel is going to be unfruitful. Thorns and briars. And they are going to lament for the fruitful vine. Now I want you to go to Isaiah 32, 16. We're going to see that the righteous man is going to be fruitful. Verse 16. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. There you have it. The righteous is going to remain in the fruitful field. Amazing how it says judgment shall dwell in the wilderness. Now I'm going to show you that the northern kingdom shall not be fruitful. This is going to be Hosea 13 and 12. Because they love to push that northern kingdom in Matthew 21, 43. And we're going to get to that today, too. Yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to make sure that we are the house that is constantly speaking of Matthew 21, 43. Let's get that. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 13, verse 12. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hid. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he shall not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. All right, so who is Ephraim? The northern kingdom. That's right. I encourage you brothers to study. I encourage you brothers to study. You need to know who is Judah, and you need to know who is Ephraim? All right, y'all, that's enough. Knock it off. Ephraim represents the northern kingdom. Now keep going. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Keep going. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come. The wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry. All right, this is speaking of Ephraim. Though he be fruitful from among his brethren, an east wind is going to come up and destroy that. Keep going. And his fountain shall be dried up. He shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels. Keep going. 
Samaria shall become desolate, for she has rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with child shall be ripped up. So now we just established the fact that the northern kingdom is not going to be fruitful. That was proved in 2 Ezra, right there. He literally said your children is not going to be fruitful because they have despised my commandments. Now, I want to show you something, and I'm going to show you a clip. But I want you to read this first. This is going to be on the screen. The year that Mehmed II, who would have the honor of becoming the blessed commander, was born numerous miracles were witnessed. Horses gave birth to many twin babies. The land gave crops four times in a year. And the branches of the trees bent down to the ground, so heavy were they from fruit. So when Mehmed II was born, all these miracles took place. Because Mehmed is Turkish for Mohammed. Okay? And he is a type and shadow of Mohammed, peace be upon him. Because he conquered the Byzantine Empire according to the prophecy that he said. He said, surely... You shall conquer Constantinople, all right? And Vlad Dracula, okay, that is going into the Apostle Paul, okay? The teachings coming from Islam or the house of David has destroyed the teachings coming from the house of Saul, which is Christianity. All these miracles took place and all these miracles is going into him being fruitful. Now I'm going to play the clip. The year that Mehmet, who would have the honor of becoming that blessed commander, was born. Numerous miracles were witnessed. Numerous miracles. Horses gave birth to many twin babies. The land gave crops four times in a year. And the branches of the trees bent down to the ground. So heavy were they with fruit. All right, so there you have it. I'm not making this stuff up. On his arrival, before he was even born, all these miracles were taking place. And all of it had to do with being fruitful, multiplying, replenishing. The thing that the Apostle Paul was against because he taught that all men should be just like him, single. So now getting back to where we was at, you see this picture on the screen? The tree is bending down from the fruit. That is deep. That is so deep. We should all be striving to be fruitful. All right? And this is a picture of him being fruitful. All right? The Gentile messenger. Now I want to give you another scripture. This is going to be Isaiah 29, 17. Remember, we just read about the righteous man is going to be fruitful. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 29, verse 17. Is it not yet a very little while? And Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest? All right, so Lebanon is going to be fruitful. Now, there are approximately 4.7 million Lebanese citizens in Lebanon. In addition to this figure, there are an additional 1 million foreign workers, mainly Syrians. Now remember the story of Jehoshaphat Ahab going against Syria. And the Syrians conquered Ahab. Wow. Okay. So this is going into the seers, okay? This is going into the seer, the real prophet. There are approximately 4.7 million Lebanese citizens in Lebanon in addition to this figure. There are an additional 1 million foreign workers, mainly Syrians, and about 470,000 Palestinian refugees in the nation. All right. Lebanon is also a home to various ethnic minorities found refuge in the country over the centuries. Now I'm going to show you the percentage of Lebanon 
that is Muslim. Now we know that America, we have 1.1% of the country's population that is Muslim. Now in Lebanon, however, statistics, Lebanon, a dependent polling and research firm estimates that 69.3% of the citizen population is Muslim, okay? And the rest is 31.2% Sunni, all right? So it is mostly Muslim there, and it is fruitful. Now I'm going to show you another scripture. This is going to be 2 Ezra 5.37. But before you get to that scripture and read, I got to show you another clip. I got to show you another clip. Because I went to my phone today and I typed in Matthew 21, 43, IUIC. Now I'm going to show you how many videos IUIC do on Matthew 21, 43. Matthew 21, 43 is very important because Jesus is announcing that the kingdom will be taken from Israel. That's very serious. Matthew 21, 43, it reads, Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. That word nation actually means ethnos in the Greek, and it means non-Israelite. Gentile heathen nation. Now consider when Mehmet II, his arrival, how all these spontaneous, miraculous things were taking place. And it was fruitful. Okay, the trees, branches breaking from all of the fruit. This is going into good works. Okay, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is full of good works. Look at what has happened right now. From one man, one religion that is the fastest growing religion in the world as of right now. It is the second biggest religion in the world right now. And it will be number one. Once the house of Saul continues to get weaker and weaker in the house of David, which is the house of Islam, gets stronger and stronger. The apostle Paul's ministry is going to diminish is going to diminish in Israel. These Israelite camps fail to bring out the truth about the Prophet Muhammad being fruitful. So, as I search, most of the videos are the videos that I'm doing on Matthew 21, 43. Look at this, y'all. That's about nine videos of just me bringing out Matthew 21, 43. And that was the first thing. I started bringing out when I came into this truth was Matthew 21, 43. All right. Now, if you look, IUIC don't have one video on Matthew 21, 43. The only videos that are surfacing are just videos related to IUIC. But they don't have one video specifically talking about Matthew 21, 43. Not one. You have other Israelite camps, and they are puppets because IUIC is their puppet master. And think about it. You got people who are making comments on my videos about Matthew 21, 43, and they are all confused. Why? Because they leaders don't bring it out. They don't talk about it. You got other Israelite camps trying to break down Matthew 21, 43, and they are all different. Some say he was talking to the chief scribes and leaders, okay? Some say they don't even believe that scripture is supposed to be in the Bible. You got some that say it was given to the northern kingdom. So they are all in confusion about Matthew 21, 43. But if I was to type in John 3, 16, because this scripture right here is for people who don't study. John 3.16 is a scripture that everybody knows, okay? Because everybody doesn't study to be able to ask the bishop about Matthew 21.43 so he gets to avoid that hard question. Now, look at all these videos 
that IUIC has on John 3.16. Bishop by himself. So-called bishop by himself. Explaining John 3.16. There he go again. Explaining John 3.16 for dummies. I can keep going. I'm still scrolling. And all I see is IUIC talking about John 316, but they don't have one video on Matthew 2143. That's the reason why I bring it out. And I've been made this discovery because I never heard them bringing it out. Now let's get to that scripture. This is going to be 2 Ezra chapter 5, verse 37. We are continuing Ezra and his complaining about Israel being God's only fervent lover. And now they're being trodden underfoot by the Gentiles. Let's get that. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 5, verse 37. Open me the places that are closed, and bring me forth the winds that in them are shut up. Shew me the image of a voice, and then I will declare to thee the thing that thou laborest to know. And I said, O Lord that bearest rule, who may know these things, but he that hath not his dwelling with men. As for me, I am unwise. How may I then speak of these things whereof thou askest me? All right, so the angel is saying, okay, if you answer my questions, I will answer yours. And Ezra finally confessed. He said, look, I am unwise. I'm speaking about things I don't know. The truth of the matter is his heart was broke because God went from Israel to the Gentiles. Now let's get that in verse 40. Then said he unto me, Like as thou canst do none of these things that I have spoken of, even so canst thou not find out my judgment, or in the end the love that I have promised unto my people. Now my people is going back to 2 Ezra chapter 2 verse 10. He's not talking about Israel. He's talking about this nation of people that he refers to as my people. Because Ezra, he was constantly trying to say, God, you only love Israel. You only love Israel. These other nations are nothing. They are like spit. But the angel just corrected him and said, look, you don't know how much God loves his people. Speaking of the other nations. Let's get that. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 2, verse 10. Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra. Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem. Tell my people. That's proof he's not talking about Israel because keep going. Which I would have given unto Israel. Go back to my people. Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem. That's proof he wasn't talking about Israel because he's about to give his people Israel's stuff. All right. So now we're going back to where we was just at. You don't understand that God loves his people. And he wasn't speaking about Israel. He was speaking about his people. Matter of fact, people don't even know how God even said he loved Cyrus. Someone get that in Isaiah. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 48 verse 14. All ye, assemble yourselves, and hear, which among them that hath declared these things. The Lord hath loved him. He will do his pleasure on Babylon. All right, he is speaking of Cyrus. You got to understand that Cyrus was the main topic of the latter chapters of the book of Isaiah. Now let's get that in the Amplified Version. It's on the screen. Assemble all of you, and listen. Who among them, the idols and Chaldean astrologers, has declared these things. The Lord loves him, Cyrus of Persia. The Lord loves him, Cyrus of Persia. Cyrus is a picture, a type in shadow of the Gentile messenger. Start over again where it says the Lord. The Lord loves him, Cyrus of Persia. He will do his pleasure and purpose against Babylon. And his arm will be against the Chaldeans who reign in Babylon. All right, so here we have God speaking of Cyrus. God charged Cyrus to build a house for the children of Israel. To rebuild the temple. And guess what? We still messed it up. And it still ended up being destroyed. After 
Cyrus charge to have it rebuilt. Okay, so now we want to move on. We want to go to 2 Ezra chapter 6 and verse 6. This is the book of 2 Ezra chapter 6 verse 6. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, and through none other. By me also they shall be ended, and by none other. All right, so this is literally saying that God is the creator. Do you all agree? Yes. yes. All right, it's literally saying he considered these things, and they were all made through him alone. That went over most of y'all heads. Because according to Paul, God created everything through Jesus Christ. Let's get those two scriptures. Let's get those. This is going to be Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now Paul is saying that God created all things through Jesus Christ. But Ezra just confessed that God created all things by God all by himself. Which is it? Did God need help creating the world? No. no. God created all things by himself. Ezra had it right. Paul is now saying that God created all things through Jesus Christ. And I'm going to give you another scripture where he said that blasphemy. This is going to be Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. This is the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Keep going. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Keep going. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. That was a bunch of heresy. Okay? Now you got to understand the reason why God only gave the children of Israel about 40 days to mourn. After someone died, then they were to keep going. Because what would happen is the children of Israel would make an idol out of the prophet. Okay? They would make an idol out of the messenger. And what has happened is that that same spirit that was on Eli came into Paul and now he is putting the creature before the creator just like Eli was placing his sons before the father and they both were killed along with the father all right so now I want to take you back to where we was at I want you to read that again verse 6 this is the book of second Ezra chapter 6 verse 6 then did I consider these things and they all were made through me alone. They were made through who? Me alone. Keep going. And through none other. By me also they shall be ended. And by none other. That is a huge contradiction. If you're going to include the Apocrypha with the Bible. Then that's a huge contradiction. This is the reason why some people do not believe in the Apocrypha. Okay. Even Edom. Okay, they removed the Apocrypha from the Bible because the Apocrypha is saying things that is not consistent with the New Testament. Paul said all things was created through God, through Jesus. Ezra said all things was created by God alone, which lines up perfectly with Genesis when God created all things from the beginning by himself. Now I want you to go to 1 Samuel. 16 and 1 it's time for Israel to let yesterday be yesterday let the past be the past the Lord gives and the Lord he takes away blessed be his name this is the book of 1st Samuel chapter 16 verse 1 and the Lord said unto Samuel how long wilt thou mourn for Saul seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel fill thine horn with oil and go I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite for I have provided me a king among his sons. All right, so quit crying for Saul. God rejected Saul. He rejected him. Samuel was crying. God said, stop it. I'm done with Saul. 
Stop mourning for Saul. He had to tell him this twice. I'm going to get the other scripture for you. This is going to be 1 Samuel 15, 35. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 35. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. And the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord repented that he made him king of Israel. It was kind of like, dang, why did I pick this person? Why did I choose this person? The Most High regretted that he made Saul king over Israel. And we know that Saul is a type of Israel. Everything that goes for Saul goes for the nation of Israel. Okay? Because Saul was a head taller than all the men of Israel from his shoulders up. He represented the nation of Israel and God repented himself that he made King Saul king over Israel because he was king. He was king. So it was people's choice with Saul. Although the Lord picked him, it was the people's choice because the people asked for a king. And with David, who is a picture of the Gentile messenger, it was God's choice to pick a king which is of another nation. All right, so now we're going to be picking back up. We're going to be picking back up on this, but I want you to read 2 Ezra 6.34. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6, verse 34. And hasten not with the times that are past to think vain things, that thou mayst not hasten from the latter times. All right, that is going into mourning. Okay, quit worrying about the past, Ezra. Quit worrying about the past. You're thinking on vain things. You fail to realize all of the wickedness that Israel has done against the Most High. And you know God had to keep his word according to Deuteronomy 28. If you keep the commandments, you'll dwell in the land. But if you break the commandments, all these curses are going to come upon you. It didn't say, oh, I'm going to regather you and make you my nation again and put you back on top. No, Deuteronomy 28 is straightforward. It tells you, looky here. You're going to serve your enemies. And no man is going to redeem you of Israel. All right? So we're going to pick back up on this. All right? It's time for us to get in these scripts, shall we? We shall. 